why is mitochondrial health so important? And what do people, what do most people not really know about it that they should know and understand and why it, it's vital to longevity? Okay. We think about mitochondria the way we learned in seventh grade biology. Oh, they're the power house of the cell. Yeah. There are energy plants or my favorite. We were floating around as single cells and then we harnessed the mitochondria to be our mobile power plants. No, 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 no. All bacteria, all single celled organisms can operate independently. They have a basic intelligence. They have an algorithm of life. What really happened is we had a cell floating around. Mitochondria infected the cell. They're like, hey, look, a mobile Petri dish. Let's take over. And inside almost all of the cells in your body, there's way more ancient bacteria calling the shots than your cells that you identify as you. So what's really happening in our body is in near real time, mitochondria are talking to each other via many different mechanisms. They're deciding the state of your body and the state of the world around you. And then they're telling each system in the body what to do. And they're telling you what you're allowed to see or experience and how to feel about it. And then you believe it like it's real. And then you are your mitochondria's puppet. And wow, that means if they're stressed, they're going to not make energy as much and they're going to make inflammatory markers. They're going to make stress hormones, right? And if they're stressed because you have bad lighting at night in your house or because you're eating the wrong foods because there's not enough fat to build mitochondria, you're going to be stressed. And if they're stressed because you're telling yourself a lot of stories about some childhood trigger trauma thing, then they're going to be stressed because they pick up stress, right? And they're just simply saying, how do I keep this body alive as long as possible? And I eventually, by studying mitochondria and studying neuroscience for 10 years, measuring the brain waves five days at a time for very high performing CEO types, more than a thousand of these, uh, and measuring what's really going on in there. I don't know how it works now. There's an algorithm for how our bodies and our mitochondria think, and it's different than how our brains think. And it's really helpful to understand why mitochondria health is so important because every disease of aging ultimately comes down to your mitochondria, the way you charge of everything. Mm -hmm. Something went wrong with their system. And let me talk through how mitochondria make decisions, because I think it's, it's enlightening on many different levels, including like consciousness and meditation and happiness, which are part of the biohacking movement. If you join the biohacking movement to solve one problem, pretty soon you'll be a longevity guy and then you'll be a consciousness guy. That's just how it works. <laughs> like, oh, I feel so good. I want to live longer. Like it, life is good. And then, oh, now I want to live longer. Maybe I want to be happy. It, it's just, it's inevitable. And I built it. Out, <laughs> right? I, yeah, I tricked some people. So here's how it works. If I clap my hands, we know that it takes some time for the signal to make it across the internet. And then it came from your speakers to your ears. And then you heard it. Because that's what you saw, right? That's not real. If we're measuring the auditory cortex in your brain, one third of a second after the signal reached your ears, your mitochondria allowed the signal through after they had a chance to decide what it was and how you were supposed to feel about it and whether you even needed to know about it. What? Okay. So, and we know this third of a second window, it's a quarter second when you're 18 years old and it drifts up to about 350 milliseconds by the time you're 25 ish. And it stays there hopefully until you die. And if it goes above that, you're getting dementia. So there's a window on reality where your body can censor what you see. It's like the old Super Bowl. You watch the Super Bowl and it's broadcast live. And then Janet Jackson has a wardrobe thing. And magically you see that all live broadcast has an eight second censorship window to prevent that from happening unless you pay for it. You have a third of a second censorship window on reality that your mitochondria use to manipulate how you feel about things. So it's a distributed network of trillions of tiny environmental sensors with built-in compute nodes that are also manufacturing nodes. And they can manufacture heat, electricity, or a bunch of different chemicals. That's what they do. So they sense, they decide, and they do. And we get what's left after that. Wow. I've never heard that breakdown. Yeah. This is why it's so confusing. This is new thinking. I presented this in front of the Dalai Lama's co-author, Victor Chan, um, who's been his best friend for 50 years. And he, on stage, very, very surprising to me. He said, Dave, now that I just heard about these F words, everything the Dalai Lama said over the last 50 years makes a lot more sense. And multiple Buddhist scholars 
are now looking at mitochondria in a new way as a foundational formation of our ego and heavily meditated the book behind you on the shelf there hit the number one best-selling meditation and number one best-selling philosophy book in the country because of mitochondria and if you show people the cover of the book really quick by the way this is the other side effect of mitochondria i did not fast i was not dehydrated i did not take any kind of medication i got off an airplane and that's just how i look and i used to be a 300 pound guy like what that's because of mitochondria so here's how they make decisions number one if these are all f words it makes it easy it's fear if something is scary run away from kill or hide and this is why i can trigger someone by saying only for dumb people because <laughs> if you're a dumb person you might get kicked out of the tribe and then a lion tiger or bear is gonna eat you right Basically, if you have a trigger for, you know, being called dumb, then I triggered you, my finger was on your trigger, but it wasn't you. It was your mitochondria mm -hmm. fear and people who don't meditate spend nine times more energy on fear than it really needs. And people who meditate spend six times more energy on fear than anything else because your mitochondria know it's game over if you die, right? So you're hyper aware of threats. It's good. If there's a mugger behind a pillar, you're going to respond before you can think as you should. So it serves you, but it sucks. The next one after fear is food. Eat everything, right? Famine has been a problem, right? And this is a great thing. This is what a pig will do. It's what a tree will do. A slime mold will do it. Or even like a politician, all of them uh, will do the same things because all life does this. And then we have fear, then we have food. And then the next thing that all life has to do to stay alive for multiple generations, it's an F word, you know that one? So, you know, all life must do this because it has to last for thousands of years. So there has to be multiple generations and it's an F word. You've got this. There's fear, food, and fight. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first. <laughs> You're one of the rare people who doesn't drop an F-bomb. It's fertility, but it could be the other F-bomb. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. That makes sense. This is so critical to understand right now. While you're listening to this show, your mitochondria, without your knowledge or permission, are invisibly analyzing everything in the world around you, saying, should I kill it? Can I eat it? And can I hump it? Right. 100%. The entire time you're alive, they are doing this before you have a chance to think. And is there anything you've ever done you're ashamed of that isn't one of those three? I mean, there's a lot I've done I'm ashamed of. <laughs> You didn't ask the girl out. You didn't take the opportunity. You shied away from the thing. You didn't say, yeah, girl, fear, fear. Right? Yeah. You ate the entire pizza wrapped around the Ben and Jerry's. That was food, right? The time you went out on the date with, you know, the whole cheerleader team or whatever you did. Like, God, I know this is the wrong date, but I'm going to do it anyway. Everything, right? No, it's true. Yep. Okay. It's not you. It's an automated system to keep your body safe and make sure that we reproduce that's installed as part of your operating system. And you're the application, not the operating system. It's designed to be invisible. And it hates it when you become aware of it because it, it's, it's, it's a threat. What if that dude living in my, in my head who's really slow, it takes him like a whole second to figure anything out. And your mitochondria, they're really dumb. They're like, dude, I got this. Like, don't, don't get my way. Don't get my way. And here's what gives me hope about humanity is the next F word is friend. All life on earth forms an ecosystem. You support your own species. You support the species around you according to your ecological niche. So we're wired in our bones to be kind to each other. It's why we form family units. It's why we form tribes. It's why we help little kids who aren't ours. We help the lady across the street. And it's why community is so nourishing when you have healthy support. And the final F word is the one that is the focus of heavily meditated in my 40 years of Zen neuroscience school. It's forgiveness. Because one thing our mitochondria are terribly good at is holding a grudge. So there's that one time in third grade, your coach yelled at you about something and your mitochondria were like, ah, I got it. When you were in third grade, you didn't feel safe when that happened. So it basically turned on an alert, right? And it's an alert, the same as your phone. Imagine if your therapist, your meditation teacher's like, okay, man, the, these TikTok alerts just keep popping up. I can't get anything done. And they're like, gently swipe left. Just set them to the side. Recognize that they're part of being human. And you go to the biohacker, we're like, um, you swipe up and go into the system, system settings and just turn off the freaking alerts. Okay. They're both valid techniques. So all of psychology and all of meditation 
is manage alerts better. And biohacking and what you have in Heavily Meditated, people spend $20,000 a week to learn how to do that. And I put that in that book. That's what's most important. You turn this off, now your mitochondrial network that's constantly looking for threats, it'll stop seeing things as threats that aren't threats. And that frees up so much energy. When people go through 40 years of Zen, there's five days of really intense turning off alerts. Well, they come out and they say, everything feels easier. Because someone cuts you off in traffic. I mean, I used to have like the biggest muscles on my middle finger. That was by my most developed musculature in my 20s. And when I finally got this, like, it doesn't matter if somebody cuts me. I'd have zero change in my heart rate. And the story used to be there disrespecting me. And I didn't even know the story was, man, it would just piss me off. It doesn't piss me off anymore. I don't have to regulate my behavior because I don't care. Right. It wasn't a threat. I just thought it was. Or so anytime you're angry, it's ultimately fear. It just doesn't feel like it. It's just the way your body manipulates you to make sure you do what it wants. Yep. And you'll get I, in jail. It's pretty much those first three F words will get you in jail every single time if you don't regulate yourself very well. And you don't regulate yourself very well when your mitochondria don't make enough energy for you to regulate yourself. Right. Man. What a breakdown. I really appreciate that. I'm so glad that I brought that up and asked that and that we got into that because I've never heard any breakdown like that. And I've been studying this for quite a while. There is no one else on earth you'll hear that from. This is original work. It's amazing. And you, it, so what you just broke down, was that in the book that you were talking about that you have from prior? That's in Heavily Meditated. Okay. I've been doing the F words before, but to, to combine them in that way with neuroscience, the, the mitochondrial how, proper care and maintenance of mitochondria, especially in the brain, that is headstrong. My longevity book is superhuman. And if you read any of the recent big longevity books, exactly the same frameworks that I use. Um, there are some people who are trying to say a, you know, vegan diets that happen to contain collagen from cows are a longevity diet or something that is not real. No, uh, but I tell you why. Beautiful.